guys, Andrea Mills here. Today I'm going to give you guys a quick tour of our kitchen. Um, I have done almost all the rooms in our house and I've just got this one and my office left so I want to hurry up and get this done before YouTube takes the annotation feature off of YouTube. I have a video I made of the floor plan of our house and on that floor plan there are links to each of the rooms so that you can go to those rooms and look and see what they are like and I want to make sure to get these on there before I can't do it anymore. This is not going to be an in-depth tour. I'm not going to go through all the cupboards and refrigerator and all that. I'm just going to kind of do a once over of everything. I will get a refrigerator organization video up one of these days because that's something that lots of you have asked for but today's not going to be the day for that. This is our kitchen. It's about 12 by 14 and if you saw our living room video you'll know that there used to be a wall right there at the end of the cabinets and then there was a an arched kind of a doorway in between here so just a little over a year ago we tore that wall out and then our living room and kitchen became one room we're a family of 10 and our house is it depends on how you um, want to say it if it was being sold, it would be sold as an 800 square foot house because that is the actual size of the house on the main level. We have finished the unfinished basement to double our living space, but the house would list as an 800 square foot house. So it is now 1600 square feet and we have eight children. So we have three bedrooms, a boy's room, a girl's room, and our room. We have now this combined living room and um, kitchen area that's also the dining room. This is where we do our homeschool. We have one bathroom. We have a pantry. Um, we have, we call it the library, but it's really just like a walkthrough room where we have all of our books and our laundry and things are in there. And that room leads to, to Tom's office, which is where we run our home business. So that's how we support ourselves. Tom does computer repair from home. So all of that stuff is in our 1600 square feet of living space. So we get a lot of things packed into our little house. So you'll see here that we have a 10 foot long, two and a half foot wide table. I think it's two and a half foot. Tom just built this a couple months ago as a temporary um, table so that we could we want to get a nice tabletop, but we want to try out the size before we committed to paying for something. So he just built us this one to use in the meantime. Then we got some uh, four benches that we use with the table. And then right over here, that's Miss Claudia's high chair. We used to have a wooden high chair, which is actually still up in our attic because I didn't have the heart to get rid of it. But there was just not really a good place to put it in here when we were like working on rearranging things so we decided just to get that one that attaches to the table and it works really well. He also built us this pot rack for all of our pots and pans and I keep my tea kettle up there also. So that was just a couple of months ago that he put that in and then these lights underneath of it. And then we also replaced the kitchen light and the living room light to be matching ceiling fans because we had a hanging light. We had a different table over there we did have one table in the kitchen a small round one and then this area over here was a built-in bench that he had built with a smaller table like a like a standard size table since we want to put in this big one we need to get rid of our hanging light because we're going to get rid of the table over there so that's when we did all the new lights the new pot rack we had had a pot rack above that table but you know like one project leads to another. So we had to get all this stuff done before we could do the big table here. I should mention my cabinets in here. All of the cupboards that we have were hand-me-downs from my aunt and uncle when they were remodeling their kitchen when we first got married. So we probably had them 14 years, I would say. Um, I think Thomas was little when we first got them. So yeah, probably 14 years we've had them. So I painted them. Well, they've been painted several times, but I painted them and then in this particular ones we used to have all of our pretty um, like china. So Tom cut out the openings and then we put some glass from some old windows that we had in there. We just used those little mirror clips and put the glass on there so that you could see them. But recently I decluttered all of that. So now I've got some of my small appliances up on the top and all my glass measuring cups and our food scale and that's like 
uh, basket with our vanilla and our brown sugar and things like that in it and then uh, some mixing bowls and things like that along the bottom. Then coming down, that is a pull down um, cookbook holder that my grandpa made for my mom. Both of them are now passed away and I have it and so that holds our cookbooks when we, it just pulls down then we can look at the cookbooks laid out there. Then our microwave and on top I have two long baskets that have, this one has popcorn, this one has oatmeal, and some hot cocoa packets in the back. I did have three, but I couldn't pull this down. When I moved the microwave over here, I couldn't pull this down with the third basket here, so now it's holding fruit on the other counter. At that time, it had the third one had the hot cocoa then, and then the oatmeal was on its own. Then next to the microwave is our fryer, and we use this. We have it filled with coconut oil, and we use this to fry up like chicken nuggets for lunch sometimes, french fries, Tom likes to fry tortillas in it. It's funny how my mind draws a blank when I'm trying to tell you guys like what we do with stuff. Like I can't think of it now. Anyway, next door to the fryer is our KitchenAid that gets tons of use at this house. And then down in this cupboard, these are all like um, baking utensils. So like scrapers and stuff for the KitchenAid and things like that. That's just like some random, the the least used kitchen items are in that drawer. Underneath is my big slow cooker and the popcorn maker, the baskets for the fryer, and then this cupboard that doesn't want to stay closed. You can see has my big buckets of like flour and sugar and oats and things. We have bulk storage for all that stuff downstairs, but we fill these little buckets and bring them up to the kitchen so that we have a smaller big amount up in the kitchen. Then on the side of the refrigerator is um, a wall pocket file thing that's magnetic and that has Tom's recipes in it. Then coming over to above the refrigerator, those cupboards have all of the KitchenAid parts that we don't use very much like the pasta maker and the, um, the juicer and the grain mill and things like that. They're all up in those cupboards. And then in that basket is some empty water bottles that I use for my Fazzini and of course as a homeschool family, we keep the front of the refrigerator covered with all of our school things. This little cup thing I really like. It's made for a locker, so it's magnetic, and so we can keep all of our pins and things in there that we need for marking off our chore chart or our demerit chart or things like that. Then on the side of the refrigerator is another wall file because I accidentally ordered two, but I've been using it for these little things right now. I don't know what I'll do with it permanently. But these are magnetic, um, like dry erase things, and we're using them as our dad notification system. So if there's a problem during the day that I need to remember to talk to dad about, I write it down on here. Then I hang it up on the side of the stove because I will always remember to look here. I always see things if I hang them here. So um, it reminds me that dad needs to talk to this person. And since we organize all the kids by color and they're all different colors, it works out perfect for us. And if you watch our homeschool vlogs, you know that we've just started doing different challenges with the kids. So I hung up this chart here so we could keep track of our challenges. And then of course we just have our brooms and mops and things here. This doorway goes into the girls room and it does not have a door on it. So we just have a curtain on it. And eventually, someday, we'll do something different with that. Then next to that is this, I think this was for um, plastic bags, but we put our aprons in it. Then we have our uh, measuring thing that we use to mark all the kids' height on their birthdays. As you can see, there's lots of birthdays marked on there. And then below that is our water fountain. This is something that lots of you have asked about. I go through these phases where I try to think of ways to like make things more efficient or reduce the workload or things like that and at one point when I was in one of those phases I thought you know what I have a lot of dishes that come from just kids getting drinks of water or what they would do is they jump up on the side of the sink or on like on the front of the sink and then stick their heads under the faucet and it looked like they're gonna end up breaking something so I first had bought a porcelain water fountain that was really small it was like half the size of this one and I got that one on eBay it was like from the 1930s and it was so cute and we installed that one here but we couldn't ever get the right rubber rings for it and it kept leaking so we ended up just getting this brand new 
model that was bigger but it still fits just fine right in this spot and there's like nothing else you could do here anyway so it works out perfect kids just come by whenever they want to drink and they just get up there drink water and we keep a little stool underneath for the little guys that can't reach then this doorway goes into my office and there's our back door right there and i'll talk about a few things here this is our school bell so i bought this at hobby lobby years ago never dreaming it was going to be such a instrumental part of our life but this bell i've taught all my kids to come to when it rings so when I need them, I just ring this bell and everybody comes running. And then this is our garbage can. As you can imagine, 10 people generate a lot of garbage. <laughs> and so we had had just a regular, it wasn't one of the tall kitchen trash cans. It was like a little shorter one that we could put under the cupboard. But we had to take it out twice a day and it was kind of annoying. So I thought it would really be nice to have an outdoor garbage can, but there was not really any place to put it. So I do all these things like ordering the water fountain in the garbage can thing without consulting Tom because I know if it shows up here he'll figure out how to make it work so that's just kind of how I do things. So I ordered this um, outdoor garbage can came from Amazon and then I also ordered a countertop piece from them and so they arrived in the mail and of course then Tom's like well I guess I'll build this cabinet so he built this little just like a little wooden cabinet thing and then I made this curtain for it so that's how we take out the trash is we open the curtain and then you can pull it out and then they change the bag and we close it back up so it kind of sticks out a little bit from the edge of the cabinet but it works fine and then Tom cut a hole in the top so that we can just drop trash into it and I actually use this a lot of times for cutting things I can scrape stuff right off into the trash but we also have a bunny rabbit and a compost pile so I bought these little cooked pot things and stuff that I'm going to send out for the bunny to eat I put into these two that's why I put a little bunny sticker on them and then this one is stuff that could go to the compost pile so like I might put eggshells in that one and then like carrot tops might go in that one then when the kids go out to feed the bunny in the morning they take whatever things out that need to be taken out and I just got some kitchen towels hanging there a lot of this is like not the best thing but I just don't have that much room and so I'm always looking for different ways that I can make stuff happen so um, when we got a pizza oven which I'll show you in a second I lost cupboard space when we built this we lost cupboard space so that's why we had to have a pot rack because this used to be where our pots and pans were but we didn't have that space anymore so we needed the pot rack I lost the space where I used to keep a lot of my um, towels and things like that so I had to come up with a new way of storing those things above here we have our lids for our pots and pans and then I have some like vases and things like that up above and then since I didn't have any drawer space anymore for pot holders I bought some magnetic hooks that attach up under here and then those just hang on the hooks way up on top is my griddle and then I have baking pans like my cake pans and things like that and the cooking spray is all up in these cupboards yeah, my rolling pins are just sitting there. I don't like that situation, especially because sometimes one of them will roll off and scare us all to death. So one of these days, that's a situation that we need to deal with. And then our other big um, like cookie sheet things are down in that bottom drawer. Then over here, th these two cupboards hold all of our open food. So like crackers and chips and cereal and things that are open go in here. Most of our food is stored down in the pantry downstairs, except for like fresh things, obviously, or in the refrigerator. But all of the stuff that we stock up on when they're on sale, all that stuff is down in the pantry. Then we have our paper towels. And I have this little little wall shelf I got for like $10 at Walmart. And I have my pepper, my butter, and this is a mix of salt and, not salt, cinnamon and sugar the kids put on their toast. And then these are the little containers that I keep for my Parmesan cheese so I can use them for food storage. I don't keep a lot of empty containers that's literally all the ones that I have that are like that for um, storing leftovers and things so either it goes in there or it has to be put in like a regular dish with like plastic wrap or something for the refrigerator then all of my cooking utensils and serving utensils are here this little vase thing was actually for my grandpa's funeral and it had flowers in it and I kept it for my um, all my utensils and then I have the giant ugly box of plastic wrap if I had known how long this thing was going to be part of my life I would have done something early on to make it look more attractive 
every time like anything greasy gets on it it just like the cardboard soaks it up and it's just really super ugly i have a new one so when this one goes it runs out i'm going to paint the new box before i set it out here because now that I know it's gonna be with me for like years, <laughs> I wanna make sure it looks a little nicer than this one does. Then we have our mortar and pestle, the toaster, and then above the toaster is our bread. This is one of those shelves that goes with like the closet made organizers for like a bedroom closet, but I got I bought a corner piece. I always intended to cut that little chunk off, but we never did. So anyways, I bought that and I hung it up here so that I would have a place for all the bread so it can hold five whole loaves of bread right here in the corner above the toaster. And then I have some of my small cutting boards off to the side. We have some of our giant pizza pans up on the top. That one should be over there, but Tom didn't put it over there, so now it's over there. And then in these cupboards are some of are the few um, china type dishes that I kept and some glass dishes that we use for like more parties and things like my cake plate and stuff like that are up there. And then our everyday dishes are here. This was originally two different cupboards, but Tom cut this off so that we can make one cupboard that was the right size for here. Because remember, these were hand-me-down cabinets that we got from my aunt and uncle. And then he had he had put in some of those little dowel rods to make one of those plate racks that you can slide the plates in. But eventually we got rid of those because we couldn't store as much as we could doing it this way. So now we just put them in like this and it works fine. Then underneath here we have hooks for our mugs, or some of our mugs. And then I hang some, they must all be in the dishwasher, but there's normally all of my individual um, like measuring spoons are hanging right here on little hooks. And then I have some bundled ones too, and my funnel is back there. Then here is all of our like daily vitamins and our herbs and spices and things that we use like regularly. I also keep my salt and a small thing of sugar here. And this one does not have coffee in it anymore. It has gelatin in there. This one has flour for like just when I need to dust something with flour. This one always has Kool-Aid packets in it. I started doing this when I just had so many different bottles of spices and things. And like I said, I just didn't have room for stuff. So I was trying to think of a way to have everything and not take up so much space. So I decided to use one of these shop organizer things in the kitchen and it works really great. Because they're not like closed, they're not airtight, I don't put things in here, or I've learned not to put things in there that I'm not gonna use up fairly quickly because it just like, the air gets to it and it just is, it loses its flavor faster. But generally speaking, everything in there has been completely fine. Okay, so next, or on the side of that cabinet there is my cutting board. Tom made little pegs to hang it on. And then underneath, one time I was going through a cleaning frenzy and I'm like, I'm getting rid of stuff and unless I can think of a use for it. And I had this triple plate rack and so I decided to put it in here to hold paper plates and then we use these a lot with the kids. So it got saved from the um, donation pile. And the cabinets here we have like our knives and um, cooking utensils. Underneath is all the empty jars from like, I can, I can a lot of food and so as we use stuff and empty it, I put the jars in there. And when it gets very full, they move up to the attic. And I also keep extra paper towels under there. And then this drawer has like sandwich bags and aluminum foil and things like that in it. And then we have our pizza oven underneath and right on top of it is our pizza paddle and a few other pizza supply things. And we have, you know, your standard sink situation. That mug was a gift from my sister and I use it to hold my scrubbing things in it. Um, oh, I guess under here is where we keep dish soap and um, dishwasher detergent and things like that. This cupboard actually doesn't really have anything in it at the moment. When I was doing all that rearranging a while back, I now have this empty cupboard, so I haven't quite thought of what I'm gonna do with it yet. And over on this side is my colander that we use most of the time, and then another one of those bag holders that I fold up washcloths for using at the sink. And then the cupboard next to it has all of our cups, and it has the kids uh, plastic dishes and plates and ramen bowls and things like that. This cover has all the other random kitchen things like my fat separator and stuff like that that didn't really have a home and I also keep our hair cutting supplies in here since I give haircuts in here. And coming down is everybody's mugs. Um, 
I had mugs made for each of the kids with their names on them. And this is where I charge my batteries for my camera for making YouTube videos. Then right now I'm trying out this like salt fermenting lemons and limes. So those are sitting there. And this is the basket that used to keep the hot cocoa in it, but now I use it for fruit. That's a wax melter that my mother-in-law gave me. We call these our snack drawers. Um, I think they're turning into something else apparently for one of the kids. It looks like a toy drawer. I always was like finding like half-eaten things that seemed like such a waste. So I decided, and nobody could remember whose was whose. So I decided to have snack drawers. So now like if they had some like a half a pop tart left or something we would put it in a bag and put it in the drawer that belonged to them so that they could find it later. And next to that is our cereal dispenser. We buy cereal in the big bags and it was always a mess with the kids trying to pour out of them. So one time we were staying at a hotel and I'm like, you know what, why don't I get one of those things like they have at hotels for the cereal. And so um, it's one of our chores to make sure these are filled. So the top just pops off and they pour in the cereal and then they can turn the little knob and get their cereal in the morning. These drawers, this one has bibs and um, reusable bags in it. We have our dog food right there because our dog dishes are right next to it. Sorry, it's getting dark here. Uh, our eating utensils, Play-Doh, toys, um, nothing and nothing. I have a couple empty drawers over there too, I forgot because of this whole um, KonMari stuff I was doing recently. So all sorts of new empty spaces in here. And then we have our dishwasher. This is a Bosch dishwasher with a built-in um, water softener. We have super, super, super hard water here. So it has been so nice having the water softener in the dishwasher because it works so much better that way. We did have a dishwasher. I should just tell you about all of our appliances actually because um, when we bought this house, it was like rundown, horrible. We paid $12,000 for it, in fact. And so we've just been fixing it up over the years and doing what we could, but we like had no money. So first off, the stove we have now um, is the third one we've had since we bought this house 17 years ago. So the first one was like a reddish brown color and it was in the house when we bought it and when we would use it it would just like gas out the house and it was terrible so then we bought one at a garage sale that was a mustard yellow color for $35 and we used that one for years then um, Tom got this one from a customer of his for $150 they had bought it or maybe it came with their house or something and they wanted it to upgrade so they only use it like twice so we bought it from them for $150 and that's what we've been using ever since. Our original refrigerator was given to us by our church and it was really super old and it was missing all the little compartment things on the, in the door so Tom used dowels to make compartments so that we could use it and then I'm not sure how long it's been but my brother and his wife were moving and they had this fairly new refrigerator. It was like a year old. It had got left full of food with no power and it was really horrible. And so they said that we could have the refrigerator for a hundred bucks, but we had to clean it out ourselves. So my dad and Tom went over to my brother's house and they were cleaning it out and the freezer had like meat that was all like bloated and swollen and <laughs> they, it was not pleasant. And they had to keep running out of the house to like, breathe because it was so terrible they were not prepared for the situation and um anyways th there was a hail, hail storm while it was ha they were working on it and they decided that they would rather stand outside in the hail than inside with the smell from the refrigerator so it was it was that bad but they got it all cleaned out it actually took us weeks to get the smell out and everything but we got it clean and then later what ended up happening when we were going to pay my brother for it was that he decided he'd rather um, trade for haircuts since I cut hair like not professionally but just I do it for our family so we ended up trading 10 haircuts for and and the work to clean it for this refrigerator and it's been a good refrigerator it's not a very big one but as I've said I've got lots of good organization to keep make it work for us so one of these days I'll get a video out of that so the dishwasher was like almost a thousand dollars which means it's like by far the most expensive thing in this kitchen the original dishwasher that we bought at a garage sale cost us ten dollars and we used that for many years then we had a little bit well we bought a new one that was like three hundred dollars when our town got uh, drilled a new water well 
it stopped working and we well we thought the dishwasher wasn't working so we were trying to fix it and then Tom accidentally broke something on it so and then we discovered that it wasn't the dishwasher at all it was the new water that was the reason that our dishes weren't getting clean so we decided just to go ahead since the other one was now broken and the water was not going to change to get this one with the built-in water softener and it has been a big blessing okay so i think that we've looked at everything in here pretty much so i just got one more room tour to do before we're all done with all the rooms in the house and i appreciate you guys coming over and taking a look around with me tonight and i'll talk to you guys again very soon mm -hmm.